the Taliban rounded up women for the sin of showing an ankle and executed a bunch of them in a soccer stadium. Now, I'm probably uh, uh, forgetting a few salient details, but in, in essence, that's what happened. And nothing, not one word came out of the feminist movement here in Canada or in the United States. Um, and just, I, I remember scratching my head at that, thinking, how can you sit silently by while your sisters are slaughtered like cattle? And the same thing with uh, with this. Like, how can you sit silently by while your sisters are exploited? Uh, you know, nothing more than vanity. And over and over and over again, this really actually what this is morphing into for me is an indictment of modern feminism because it's very much a smorgasbord application. They walk down the line of issues and they pick the ones they like and they ignore the ones that aren't all that fun to deal with. And a lot of people suffer because of that, because if feminists actually took what they believed seriously, they would have stood up for those women in Afghanistan. They would have done a hundred different things in a hundred different times and actually made a real concrete positive difference. But that's not what they're about. They just, for some reason, seem to like the, the, um, uh, the limelight. Well, I don't know that it's that. I think it's actually, I think it's actually simpler than that, Nick. Uh, I, I think that they I think that they do really believe in, in what they're fighting for or they believed. But to, to circle back to your example of these women in Afghanistan, the dilemma was that to support or to come out against strongly against what the Taliban did in that particular case would have meant, meant sort of saying, you know, George W. Bush was right. And, and and we should be here, uh, and, and this is a just war. And so it wasn't so much that they were abandoning uh, what they originally were fighting for as much as it was prioritizing it. In other words, they, 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 couldn't, they couldn't accept the alignment of their interests with the interests of George W. Bush, who, let's, you know, after the Trump era, you know, and, and everything, all the excesses in terms of how they treated Trump. We've forgotten how badly they were treating George Bush. You know, the, the what we call the, the Trump derangement syndrome was originally the George W. Bush derangement syndrome. Derangement syndrome. And, and so I, I just think it was a question of, more a question of the hatred for Bush from a political point of view, the partisanship trumping the actual substance of the issue that that they were that they were fighting so fighting no that they were originally intended. fighting for i should say yeah it's like this is one of the reasons why i could never call myself a feminist they're just too inconsistent uh, well i take that back i am a feminist but it's it's um because i believe that women are equal to men that there's a you know it, equal doesn't mean that they're the same uh the way that a lot of feminists wants to believe like there's a lot of jobs out there women can do that men can't and vice versa. It's not about that kind of equality. But as as individuals, as as people who have value, men and women are equal. And they if they took that attitude, I'd a lot more often be on their side. Because I think that is far more important than just walking by the grapevine and picking off the grapes you like and leaving the ones you don't, which is what these people seem to specialize in. So this whole fun we're having with uh, Miss Mrs. Sri Lanka is actually, you know, a pretty fluffy story. But when you delve into it, and when you begin to understand the underpinnings, um, you have to say to yourself, okay, so what's really going on here? How come feminism hasn't shut this down yet? Uh, they've intruded in pretty much like you can't have a guy's uh, gymnasium. Uh, like you used to be able to, you can't have a men's club. Uh, women can have their own clubs, but men cannot have their clubs. So if you and I want to open a smoking bar that uh, offered cigars and brandy, uh, just to sit and enjoy each other's company, you know, for a modest fee, uh, that would not be allowed. So the inconsistency, I think, is what really undermines any credibility they might have ever had. Well, it's a complicated subject in many respects. That's 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 for sure. But um yeah, 
but the, just the image of Mrs. World, you know, caring. Yeah. And, you know, there's an element Plucking to this. The we, we, there's an element to this we actually haven't really delved into, and we don't really have time to get into it in any kind of detail. But, but you know, here is Mrs. Sri Lanka uh, being accused of being divorced and therefore uh, not really being eligible to become Mrs. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, and her defense is, well, I'm I'm not divorced. I'm just separated, which of course raises the question: What's the difference, except from a legal point of view, between not living with your husband or being separated, you know, for X number of years, uh, uh, or being right. divorced? And so that's a whole other element to all of this. But um, you know, it, it raises really interesting questions, and we didn't even get into the topic of how you deal with, with gender uh, sex change operations, or even, to be even more controversial, the, the, the gender expression, which is, I don't have to have the operation, I feel like a woman. Now, I don't know if they have yeah. same-sex marriage in Sri Lanka, so, um, you know, you might have a little bit of difficulty with that. That's one way to weed people out. If you don't have same-sex marriage, then, you know, Obviously, feeling like a woman isn't going to cut it, you know, because you have to be no, married to true. somebody. Oh, man. I wish there was an easy way to uh, end all this because, let's face it, uh, it's silly in a lot of ways that, you know, fighting over a tiara and ripping it out of another woman's hair <laughs> because she's divorced. She, you think she's divorced and she says, no, no, I'm just separated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As you put it, who cares? It's the same thing. You know, well, but cultures are different. They look at things differently. So uh, we'll that's, have to see. That's true enough. That's true enough. But still, the spectacle of that's just priceless. So, oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Well, we're coming up to the top of the hour. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break here. If you're listening to the live show, don't go away. Don't go too far anyway. You may want to take a bathroom break. You may want to pick up your favorite beverage and sit back down and relax and listen to hour number two. Um, and if you're listening to the podcast, thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in on Monday morning for part three of this week's Nick and Joe show on thinkradio.ca. <laughs> 